हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ए न्यू लेक्चर टुडे ऑन वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट्स वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट इट इज मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इन पीडियाट्रिक्स सो बिफोर वी गो इन टू द वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट्स फर्स्ट लेट अस लर्न फर्स्ट लेट अस लर्न अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट्स व्हाट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट्स सो this is the ventricle okay this is the tricuspid and bicuspid valves this is the ventricular wall now this part just below the cushion this is called has infundibular part what is infundibular part this is the part just below the cushion okay this is infundibular part a little lower part this is membranous part and this is muscular part okay there are mainly uh, three different types of ventricular septal defects one is infundibular part second the defect is in membranous part third the defect is in muscular part so these are the three different types of ventricular septal defects which are seen okay now that is uh, if the if the defect is here then it is infundibular type if the defect is here then it is membranous type if the defect is here then it is muscular part any of this ventricular septal defect but the uh, pathophysiology of this defect is same okay now let us learn about the pathophysiology of ventricular septal defects so in pathophysiology this is the heart so this goes to the lungs and from there pulmonary uh, pulmonary veins and then whole body so this is the normal thing now what happens there is a defect here so because of this defect if you see the blood the blood flows from left ventricle to right ventricle okay because the blood flows now what happens the first step i i'm writing the steps and the clinical signs simultaneously now the blood the blood during systole it flows from left ventricle to right ventricle now what happens because the blood flows from left ventricle to right ventricle during systole this is s1 this is s2 right now the uh, both tricuspid and bicuspid valves are closed and these valves are open the blood will flow like this and also some of the blood will flow to from right from left ventricle to right from left ventricle to right ventricle and as a result there is formation of a murmur which is systolic murmur as this murmur is present throughout the systole it is called as pan systolic murmur okay that is one at the end of systole there the blood flows uh, flows from uh, left ventricle to right ventricle it is flowing 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 at the end of the systole left ventricular pressure which is there this left ventricular pressure is less than the pressure of the aorta now the systole was over so at the end of systole left ventricular pressure it becomes less than the aorta so as a result now there is closure of aortic valve but if you see left ventricular pressure is more than the right ventricular pressure though left ventricular pressure is less than the aorta left ventricular pressure is more than right right ventricular pressure and as a result the murmur which is there this will continue see because the left ventricular pressure is more than right ventricular pressure the blood goes to the the because of this part the blood flow continues but though the blood flow continues the left ventricular pressure is more less than the uh, aorta so there is a closure of aortic valve early okay so there is early closure of aortic valve a2 occurs early but if you see left ventricular pressure 
is more than right ventricular pressure so as a result blood flow continues so what happens systolic murmur which is there so this systolic murmur is now continuing okay now let me draw this diagram now um, this is s1 now okay s2 this is a2 okay aortic valve is closed but the murmur which is there this is the murmur which is starting this murmur is continuing okay beyond a2 now now what happens uh, let me draw the heart again now the blood has reached the ventricle right ventricle the blood is in the right ventricle okay so because of this there is large amount of blood in the right ventricle okay this large amount of blood in the right ventricle now there is large amount of blood in right ventricle than normal because of this there is this will uh, cause um increased blood into pulmonary trunk through the normal sized pulmonary valve the pulmonary valve is normal but because there is increased blood in the right ventricle the blood flow to the pulmonary trunk is also increased okay through pulmonary valve so because of that because the blood flow through this is increased so because of that there is ejection systolic murmur at the pulmonary area because of this part there is ejection systolic murmur okay but if you see already we have pan systolic murmur so because there is already pan systolic murmur this ejection systolic murmur which is there this will drown into the pan systolic murmur okay but because of this this pan systolic murmur will transmit to left parasternal region okay so because of this this will transmit to left parasternal region and there is one more thing see there is large amount of blood in the right ventricle increased blood into the pulmonary trunk right so because of this increased blood into the pulmonary trunk what happens is the pulmonary valve closes late obviously it takes larger time for the blood to empty right it takes larger time for the blood to empty so because it takes larger time for the blood to empty this causes delay in p2 okay and because of this large quantity of blood okay this will also cause loud p2 why because it is large quantity of blood so because of this increased blood it causes increased pressure and because of that there is loud p2 so let me draw this again so this is s1 now this is a2 now p2 occurs late but this p2 is louder than a2 okay the murmur continues murmur continues 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 and one more murmur which is ejection systolic murmur it is buried in it okay so this is one thing which you see and then now we have loud p2 now let me again draw the heart i'll draw it with this itself okay so now there is blood from the left ventricle to right ventricle through this opening and this blood will go to the pulmonary valve and as a result there is increased blood which passes through the lung fields so there is pulmonary plethora of lung fields is seen and this blood will reach the left atrium now what happens is because there is increased blood in the right ventricle the right ventricle has to pump with higher pressure as a result you see hypertrophy of the right ventricle because the right ventricle has to pump with higher pressure 
that is hypertrophy of right ventricle okay that is one thing which happens and then as the blood reaches the left atrium again the left atrium has to pump with higher pressure as a result there is hypertrophy of left atrium so left atrial enlargement occurs okay so these are the different stages different things which occur here and has the disease se become severe has the disease becomes severe there is right ventricular hypertrophy increased right ventricular hypertrophy this will lead to at some stage the pressure in right ventricle will be more than the pressure in the left ventricle then this leads to reversal of shunt which is called as eisenmenger syndrome okay this is called as eisenmenger syndrome where there is reversal of shunt okay what is there here now because of reversal of shunt now the blood from the right ventricle goes into the left ventricle so this is about the pathophysiology which occurs in ventricular septal defects i think you guys have understood about the ventricular septal defects so thank you friends for watching my lecture thank you